dropping in on you. Uh, hope everybody has had a great day. Um, and whatever it is that you are out here trying to do in this world, I hope that you had an immensely exceptional day. If not, just know that if you're still alive, you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. Keep pushing, keep fighting. Uh, for those of you who know me, uh, it's been immensely challenging and highly eventful a few weeks. Uh, I mean, in, in addition to what normal, what's normal, I am in a challenging space most of the time because I reach, I push, I'm going somewhere. <clears throat> and so I don't avoid challenges. Uh, but, you know, if you watched the video earlier, which was actually recorded yesterday on the way going home, you know, yesterday was a real bad day for me. Uh, anytime you help people, and it's what you do, it's your work. And I don't, not, not, I'm not talking about jobs, I'm talking about work. It's literally why you're here. And it's your. It's also your livelihood. Uh, it takes a toll and you gotta know how to unplug. You gotta know how to find some space. And there's so much going on in so many different areas. Uh, and you know, in addition to my normal clientele, I'm starting to take on a lot of young black males uh, in, in, in the place and in need of help and mental, emotional help. Uh, and we don't want to talk about that in the community. We don't want to talk about that. Uh, before I forget, don't forget, we need your support in the work we do in the community. And maybe you'll get a bit, if you're new to this and you don't know who I am and what I've done, uh, I'm 30 years deep in, into it. Uh, I've been doing this long before there was a social media to have a social media presence on. Uh, this is what I am and what I do. And so <clears throat> we need your support. The link to offer support is in the description box. Um, you can also give through the organization's cash app handle. Uh, we are definitely and especially asking for support for Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage initiative in addition to wraparound services for young black males up to the age of 30 and in, in, in many instances beyond uh, skills training mental health resources um, a rite of passage initiative for ages 4 to 13 um, school resources and so much more um, but look I have been consistently talking to you about the importance of properly racially socializing young black males and why it's important not to just simply socialize them into the mainstream culture but to racially socialize them because their identity as black men plays a major role in how they maneuver in this world and when they don't understand who they are why they're here what their importance and relevance is in this world it plays out in their behavior for instance there is a growing um Reality, growing, there's a growing force in which we're seeing over the last 25 years or so. Not that it hasn't always been that. There's always been an issue with fratricide uh, in our community. And fratricide, when you talk about from, talk about it from a racial perspective, where you racial, where your racial brothers and sisters, fratricide isn't anything unique in a certain sense. And that is, you know, one of the reasons why I have always fought against the moniker black on black crime um, that concept is a myth simply because we never talk about white on white crime uh, Asian on Asian crime Arab on Arab crime and the truth of the matter is 84% of all white homicides are committed by another white person uh, normal uh, the normal motive for homicide is normally emotional meaning it's tied to some form of rage anger frustration and that normally happens within the enclave in which you live and operate the most so people you know have the tendency to be able to anger you and frustrate you and create strife and all the things that lead up to something that violent now of course you can get killed nowadays being at school you can get killed in a bunch of different ways but normally 84 percent of whites are killed by other whites and those numbers are pretty much the same across uh, across racial uh, boundaries. Now, it's a little higher among us because we have a higher poverty rate and violence elevates and increases 
in, uh, in response to poverty. It just simply does. Anybody who studied penology or criminology one-on-one -on -one knows that. Okay, but here, here, here's what I'm getting at. A lot of this violence, especially male-on-male -male violence, but also male-on-female violence, which I have a major problem with and, <clears throat> and I've been talking about for quite some time, and that is, excuse me, these allergies. <coughs> Pollard is going crazy right now. He's too. Um, <coughs> anywhere, anyway, you've got this ma uh, male on male. So they call it black on black crime, but what it is, it's proximal uh, violence, and it's happening in our communities, and it's happening at an alarming rate. And there are a number of different factors. Number one, I told you simply properly socializing them, racially socializing them, reduces their proclivity and their risk for violence. Right off the bat, that's the one thing we can control the most by creating a universal and national uh, rite of passage where we socialize them and train them and, and prepare them and inculcate the principles of manhood into their psyche starting at an early age will reduce violence because it gives them purpose. Well, it's hard to see a value in a life of a person in front of you when you don't value your own. When you don't see any value or relevance in your own life, you, it, it leads to self-hatred. Well, self-hatred can be reflected in the person you're looking at. When you look at the person you, and they look like you, I don't mean identically, but I mean you see you see yourself in them. That You're a black male, they're a black male. You don't see the violence. You don't see the future. You don't see the probability of a lawyer. You don't see the prob probability of a business owner. You don't see the probability of a father. You simply see another person going through what you're going through, and they're in your space, and they're doing something to upset you. You feel disrespected. The number one cause of violence in the black community is the feeling of being disrespected. This isn't something I just came out of my ass with. This is decades of research uh, from people like myself, Dr. Howard Stevenson out of the University of Pennsylvania, Dr. Joy DeGry, or Joy DeGruy, depending on uh, you know who you ask. But I think it's Joy DeGruy, if I'm not mistaken, out of the University of Portland, um, and a couple of other people. But over the course of years, I have written, I have published, I have talked about the importance of that. Dr. DeGruy, uh, I believe in the early 2000s, was the first one to create an African-American adolescent respect scale. This scale is a series of questions and observations that can be used by a person to assess the risk of another uh, of a young black male uh, committing violence. But what that does is allow for preemptive intervention. And Dr. Howard Stevenson discovered that even after the male has become angered and seeks to execute some form of violence, something as simple as the touch by an elder man that he respects will not necessarily stop the anger, but it will stop the violence. Powerful things that we've learned, that we study, tools that I use to work with young black males uh, for years, it's there. We have put in the work. We still put in the work. It's not going to change. That's not even why I'm here. Here's something that I have written about and I've talked about in my books, and I don't think we get it. We are the one racial makeup that has absolutely no problem throwing our men away. <laughs> what I mean by that is, if we don't see any good, they're no good, they can throw them away. Now granted, there are some people out there that we need to put down, uh, and I, I make no qualms about that. There are some people out there that are literally lethal and toxic to the very community and they are a threat in the worst way and they need to be put down because there's no good in them and they are literally a threat. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about those where there's still hope. I'm talking about in this particular time, I'm not talking about youth. I'm talking about men. There are a bunch of men that need to be pulled back into the home. There are far too many single parent homes. There are far too many black women saying, I don't need a man. Far too many black women trying to do what it takes to to do. There are far too many homes and, and, it, it, and no one's asking the question anymore of how did we go 
from 1960, where it was 73 to 75 percent of all blacks were born into two parent households to being the reverse where 73 to 75 percent of all black children are now born into single parent houses. Um, nobody's asking how that happened now. It's a complex process or a complex uh, evolution that has taken place, but it's happened. And what I can tell you is you can see the decline in many areas that we complain about with the increasingly, uh, with the increasing rate of single parent households. There are a bunch of things that we don't want to face. We are so busy living our individual lives that we don't see the collective firestorm that is taking place. And we don't see the long-term implications because we haven't been conditioned and trained to look beyond the moment. A bunch of us are living in nice homes driving nice vehicles and we think we've made it because they told us that's what it was about but I see children every day every last client that I have under the age of 25 comes from an affluent black home every last one and yet they are my most problematic population within my clientele so simply having made it financially isn't the ultimate def definition or defining moment of whether or not you are successful. We are not preparing our kids. We are crippling them. We are crippling them. We are making them more entitled. We are allowing them to be reared by social media. They're Instagram masters. They're TikTok terrorists. They're, I mean, they're all over the place and everything except us is defining them. And we're wondering why there's so much of a problem. Look, I don't have a whole lot of time. I really want to hammer this out. I'm probably going to visit it again on tomorrow, maybe even later on this evening when I get in. But let me tell you something. We need black men back in the home. We've got to find a way to get that. That's one of the things that I absolutely love about J Brother Jason Wilson. If you haven't heard of Jason Wilson, look him up. Uh, matter of fact, Lawrence Fishburne, uh, just executive produced a documentary called Cave of Adelum, which is Brother Wilson's uh, dojo. Is He's a martial artist and he uses martial arts as a way of teaching and healing trauma. Brother is unbelievable. If you haven't checked out his videos, I've watched him. Just, but one of the things I've watched him do and I probably admire him for the most is the reconnecting of the black man to the family. Men who have splintered off and gone off and the children and the mother behind instead of sitting up saying and condemning him and talking about how horrible he is. He looks for the redeeming qualities and he works with them. And he definitely, um, he works with them and he helps them uh, to rediscover themselves and he introduces them to their responsibility and their true identity and then he makes them work to re-enter into the family's lives and he works with the women. I mean, it's amazing and that's something that we need to do. I would love to connect with this brother and I'm going to be reaching out to him and see you know, and I know he's a very busy person because he's touring because he just wrote another book uh, called Battle Cry um and he takes you inside the mind of a, of, of a black man. And you've got to understand it. And, and, and I, I, I love it because I recognize it because I've been there so many times. Literally inside the mind of black men. And I can tell you um, some of the things that he talks about. One of the things that probably is most prevalent uh, is where he, he says when a man tells you he's tired, believe him. And that's one of the things that we don't get to say as men. We don't get to talk about being tired. We don't get to talk about being scared. We don't get to talk about feeling irrelevant. We don't get to talk about those things because we cannot be perceived as being weak. We don't have much footing as it is, and we don't want to give up anything, so we pretend that we're okay. And my, my, my thing is, we can talk all day about black empowerment. We can talk all day. That, this system of white supremacy is keenly aware and, 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 and masterfully designed to exploit. And believe me, when 
the gateways of the secondary and uh, high learning institutions were opened up to black sisters. When corporate America opened up to black women, they had already explored the dynamic and understood that no matter how well black women do, as long as we can throttle black men, there will be no black progress. See, they gained an understanding of that. And you, you, you've got a bunch of us now that think because we made it and, and we've got a lot of sisters who believe because I've reared my black black son to be respectful. I reared him to be an earner, wage earner. I reared him to, that I, I reared him to be a man. And that may not be the this that that may not be the case because see, that's some things about manhood that you don't teach. You model. You live it out and it's observed and then it's mimicked until it becomes habit. I mean, something is simple and I have to, when I'm telling mothers this and you know, they get a little uh you know, irritated by it because they're the one at home and the father's not there and, and you know and they feel like you're I'm not insulting you I'm trying to tell you that if it was that easy that wouldn't need to be for that wouldn't be a need for a man you would be asexual you would just be you because you could do it all but I tell them all the time you can't even teach your son how to pee standing up something he just will naturally pick up by being around his dad that simple thing is a distinguishing moment in a young boy's life where he separates himself from his sister or separates himself from, from, from any other female. It's that I do what daddy does. But when daddy's not in the house, hopefully somebody at school's doing it and he's picking it up. But that's not how it was meant to happen. We need to get our men back in the home. We need to heal relationships that are healable. Now, some people don't need to be back with the person that they're not with because that person is lethal. That person is toxic. That person is dangerous. That person hasn't healed themselves. But there needs to be a restoration of the black family nucleus. That's, there needs to be a healing of the ages. If we're really truly talking about black empowerment, it starts with the family. Let me explain this and then I have to get out of here. It starts with the family. See, in other words, you have the individual is the first institution of life. It's an, the individual is an institution because the individual can make decisions, uh, adapt uh, political, moral, and ideological philosophies about all different types of things and set on a course to live. It literally had, an individual literally has the ability to set forth and move in a certain direction and live life in a certain perspective. Uh, after that comes the marriage. The marriage is huge. Why? Because the marriage is the foundation of the family. Two people with similar uh, backgrounds, two people with similar aspirations, two people with, 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 with coinciding values. So the whole thing is about values, interests, and principles. That's what everything is built on. When, what, when you rob a person of their values, interests, and principles, you can control them, you can manipulate them, you can exploit them. And that's what happened to us during slavery. We were robbed of our original and initial values, interests, and principles. And the thing is, we, we, we have to reclaim those. Well, anyway, the way that you build that is you get two people to come together in marriage and then they procreate and they have children. And having those children in very early age, they start to inculcate their values, interests, and principles into the mindsets and the behaviors of their children for the whole purpose of projecting that out into the world for those children to go out and do the same. And what happens is when you do that within the black collective with a universal mindset of black group economics, holistic education, uh, uh, gender equality, uh, role equality, role awareness, because while we are equal, I'm not a woman, you're not a man. If you're talking to female, talking to women, you're not a man, I'm not a woman. Our roles are different. Our, our, our values are equal and our importance is equal, but we are designed to do things completely differently. We are built physiologically to do things differently. We are built hormonally to do things differently. We are built to operate and create a synergy. That's the sinking of masculine energy with feminine energy that creates synergy that allows us to do something as a unit that we cannot do as individuals. And we've lost that. And we're losing it still because we are buying into the idea of selfishness and individuality. That has to change. And so that's my challenge. We've got to do that. 
we've got to come together. Those the pro programs I work on focus on that. Look, I've got to get out of here because I've got to run in and do something for my wife in, in here real quick. But what I need to do is ensure you that the only way we're going to do this is if we come together. Finally, I'm going to ask one more time. Support the work we do at the Odyssey Project. <coughs> look, look in the description box. Click the link or give through the organization cash app handle. On that note, I'm out of here.